Sushi is delicious. Salmon is delicious. And pizza is delicious. So what happens if you take all three and go like this? Salmon, sushi, pizza. Yes, that is what we're gonna be making today, but let's back up a little bit first. At this point, you all know that I absolutely love fresh fish, and you also know that I'm a big fan of making sushi. So I just figured, why not think outside the box a little bit? I don't wanna get stuck in this cycle of always making sushi rolls, and I sort of figured, why not make something new? So, like I said, today we're gonna make a sushi pizza. It's gonna take us quite a while to pull this thing off, and it's not gonna be easy. But to start, of course, we need a massive fresh salmon. So, let's go find one. We are en route right now to go pick up some fish, and I frankly I'm pretty excited because we're gonna go grab a salmon and we haven't used the salmon in quite some time so specifically speaking here we're gonna get a California King salmon you can probably tell that I'm a little bit tired because it's fairly early in the morning and that's just when you have to head to the fish market otherwise all the good fish are gonna be gone so we'll see you there in a few minutes it looks as if Joe is carrying the fish directly out of the car today we're waiting we're waiting here he's in his boots he looks great he looks fantastic so here he is all right, <laughs> we're ready. Got a wild California troll king salmon. We don't really get these unless there's a lot of water in California, so if there's like a really bad drought year, sometimes they won't allow any fish to be harvested commercially to try to keep the populations alive. Oh, that's cool. These things are like the Cadillacs of wild kings. Cop oh. rivers get a lot of pizzazz. These are pretty sweet. These are the real deal. Yep. So you heard it there again, California king salmon. That's the best of the best, like Joe said. And I know it might sound a little bit insane to be making sushi pizza out of a fish that great, but I just happen to think it's going to be one of the most most fun and delicious things that we've made yet in our kitchen. So let's head back, break down the salmon, and make some damn good food. And we are back. What you're looking at right here is a California King salmon. This thing comes all the way from California and it's an absolute beauty. Now I know looking at this thing at first glance, you might not think we're gonna be making a pizza out of it, but in reality, we are. It's gonna be a little bit different than your traditional pizza. I mean, I'm sure that comes as no surprise given that it's sushi, but looking at this thing right here, you should know that this is the best of the best when it comes to salmon. And when we peel back that belly and look inside, you can see how truly incredible that salmon is. I mean, that right there is as fresh and as beautiful as it gets. So to get things going, let's break this baby down. To break down the salmon, we're going to start by coming into the back with our fillet knife, making a really nice and clean incision as close to that spine as we can possibly get. And once we get to this point, we're going to break a few of those bones in the back. And at this point, we have this clean separation, which is perfect. We'll start by coming in at an angle with our fillet knife around the head at this point. And at this point, we'll tilt our knife 90 degrees, laying it flush against the spine and wiggle our knife back and forth as we come all the way down that entire fillet, separating this gorgeous, massive piece of salmon. Now, once we fillet our salmon, we're gonna have these parts in the middle that aren't perfectly clean, and we don't wanna waste any of that meat. So we're gonna take our spoon and simply scrape the edges of the salmon. You'll see that we'll get some really nice, beautiful meat. And it may not look perfect, but this is what you'd find inside a spicy salmon roll. And now, of course, on the section that I just scraped, the salmon is perfectly clean. Once we've cleaned off that fillet as best we can, and we've taken off every last scrap of meat that we can possibly get, it's time to go ahead with our fillets and start making some salmon salmon cubes for our sushi pizza. As you can see with our first beautiful filet right here, the meat is really clean and the salmon is bright and vibrant. But it's funny, if you look up close and we pull back on the salmon like this, you can start to see that beautiful separation in the meat. Basically the same way you'd find smoked salmon. It's just a cool thing to visualize. I just wanna show you once we cut this portion off the belly here, how incredibly, incredibly beautiful that is. I mean, just the same way I'd appreciate a piece of Wagyu that has that amazing fatty marbling, this is almost even more perfect than that. Food is definitely art. And to me, it just doesn't get better than seeing something like this. So we'll make nice clean cuts through all the salmon, ultimately getting these nice cubes that'll add to the rest of our bowl. And at this point, it's time to make some sushi rice. For our sushi rice, we're gonna start with six cups of sushi rice and then a bunch of water to rinse it off. We're gonna wash this rice until the water runs clear. And you really have to get off as much of that starch as you possibly can. Now, once you've been rinsing for about five minutes, truly a long time until that water can actually run clear, I'm gonna add five and a half cups of water into my pot here, crank up the heat until it gets to a boil, and then cover and reduce it to a simmer. At that point, it'll simmer for about 20 minutes. At this point, it's time for our seaweed. And you know what that means. You gotta cut it into the shape of a pizza. So I'm gonna start with a single sheet of my nori, make a general line of where I wanna cut, and then make some clean cuts with my knife in the perfect shape of a triangle. Doing the same thing on both sides of my nori. We're gonna make about eight of these slices or so, or enough to all go around and make a full pizza. And then we'll layer on that rice. But for now, give me a few minutes, cause this might take some time. I'm going back to art class, everybody. What you're looking at right here is gonna be the base of our pizza. These nori sheets are now cut out perfectly such that each piece here is a slice of our pizza. So for now, we're gonna set this aside and with those nori scraps, we're gonna make an amazing, amazing aioli. At this point, you already know that it's time for a little bit of flamethrower action. With all these nori scraps, we're gonna toast them up a little bit. Oh, that almost lit on fire. Oh, it's on fire, it's on fire. 
We're gonna lightly torch them with our flamethrower just to get them curled up a little bit and bring out that really amazing umami toasted flavor. This is so dangerous. Do not do this at home. I beg you, do not do this at home. Once they're nice and lightly toasted, we're gonna use them for a nice aioli. At this point, the nori is all torched and you can just hear how crumbly it is. Now we've brought out that flavor. For this aioli, we're gonna start by going in with some of our Japanese mayonnaise. Oh, how far can I? Oh, oh, I missed. At this point, we're gonna crumble all that nori into this blender, then follow it with a fresh squeeze of lemon juice, and of course, a little bit of our lemon zest. Lemon is the closest thing that I have here to yuzu, and that would pair extremely well with some of these flavors. Now, we'll place on that lid and blend it up. And with a really thick consistency like this, make sure to use the lowest setting possible on your blender. Otherwise, the blade's gonna spin too fast to actually grip to any of that mayo. Let me just tell you right now, this is one of the best condiments out there. I randomly thought of doing it one day, and I'm not sure why, but it tastes out of this world good. And I like this on literally everything, including my behind. Now that our sushi rice is finished and really steamy, we're gonna take out this piece of kombu that we added. This is also basically just a seaweed, but it's used across a lot of Asian cooking and it gives a fantastic umami flavor to whatever it is you're using it with. We just simply drape that over the top of the sushi rice while it's finishing cooking and let that steam really bring out that flavor. But now we're all set with it. For our sushi vinegar, which is gonna hold all that sushi rice together and make it sticky, we're gonna start with three quarters cup of rice vinegar. Also, add just a little sprinkle of sugar give a little bit of extra seasoning there. And now let that sugar dissolve. Once that sugar vinegar solution is complete, we're gonna lightly drizzle it over our sushi rice, lifting and aerating our sushi rice as we go. And once it's evenly spread, we're gonna let that rice sit for just a bit to make sure it can really bind together. We also want it to cool down a good amount before adding it to our nori. Now, all my toppings are ready. We are almost prepared to get this pizza going. But the last thing I wanna show you is my scallions that are growing in this little glass cup. If you didn't already know this, you can always take the bulbs and the ends of the stems of those scallions, plop them in some water and stick them by a window and they're gonna shoot right up. So for now, I'm gonna take out some of these scallions, also noting how cool it is that they grow all these really long roots once you start growing them yourself. Chop off all those bulbs and stick them back in the water to grow again, and then chop up some of those beautiful homegrown scallions to put on my pizza. And now we're ready. At this point, we're gonna add just a little bit of soy sauce to our salmon, just to get a little bit of that salty seasoning, and also just a slight touch of mirin. And then we'll stir that up. Now, we'll assemble that first slice of pizza by first going over and taking a little bit of that sushi rice, pressing that down onto the slice of pizza and evenly spreading it all the way throughout our slice. I'm sure there are a lot of pizza lovers out there that are freaking out a little bit right now. Some in a good way and some not so much. At this point, when all the rice is spread out evenly, I'm gonna curl in the edges and very, very tightly fold the edge of our pizza slice over. What you're looking at right here is our crust. And now we can build out that slice a little bit. Before doing anything else, we'll do the same thing with all of our nori until we have that full pizza that's ready to get those toppings. First, I'm gonna place down my nice little squares of salmon. Cause of course that's sort of the star of the show here, or at least it's supposed to be. I definitely don't wanna overload this with salmon because we have a lot of other amazing toppings that are gonna be complementing this. So for now, I'll start with about three pieces of salmon on each piece. And at this point, we're gonna put little dots of our nori aioli next to each piece of salmon because that's gonna give a ton of unique umami flavor. But it's not the prettiest thing in the world, so I'm trying to tuck it under each piece and sort of hide it a little bit. Next, we're gonna go on to each piece with a little bit of whitefish roe, which is by no means fancy, nor does it even qualify as caviar. But it's gonna give us a really good oil oily, fatty pop when we eat each of these little bits. Next, since you know I love mayonnaise, I gotta go over the top of the whole pizza with some mayo. And our next step will be a little bit of furikake, which basically just has some sesame seeds and toasted seaweed on there. But we don't wanna put too much because that'll cover up the beautiful, beautiful salmon. Next, we'll go on with a few black sesame seeds, which contrast extraordinarily well with something like salmon. They just give a little bit of that beautiful color contrast that we're looking for. And last but not least, for just a little bit of green color, I'm gonna go across the whole pizza with some scallions. Fresh cut from my little kitchen garden, of course. And this, everybody, is a sushi pizza. Well, we definitely did something weird today, but it's my hope after looking at this and hopefully tasting it that sushi pizza could be here to stay. I know it's definitely a really strange thing to do with the whole salmon, especially when it's a sushi grade salmon like we have. But as always, I wanna give a big thanks to John Nagel that helped us out with getting the salmon. And I really hope that they don't get upset at me for what I did with their fish. Now, for starters, I am gonna fold up my crust because that's how I eat every single slice of pizza that I ever have. I know we're probably gonna have a debate in the comments about whether or not that's the right thing to do, but I think hopefully we can all agree that this right here looks delicious. I mean, the first thing I'll say is wow. Right away, you do have to think about the fact that this sort of does look like a hand roll once I actually start to roll it up like this. Aside from the salmon here, of course, which is just lightly marinated and absolutely delicious. It's got those fatty notes. It's clearly super, super fresh and it's just amazing overall. I can't stop thinking about that nori aioli that we made. It's such a great use of scraps, what we did with that. And of course, those little burnt notes that we got from the flamethrower add a nice touch.
Now, whether you're new here or not, I'd really appreciate you tossing a like on the video. And if you wanna stick around and make more crazy foods with us, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Our channel really is growing like crazy right now. But I'm not gonna keep you. I got a whole pizza to finish.